Hello ladies and gents, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video we are going to do pure functional programming with databases in Scala with a phenomenal library known as Doobie. Now this tutorial is probably going to be a little long, and it's for the advanced Scala user. So this video, or set of videos, depending on how long this is going to take, is for those of you who are very comfortable using Scala. And we're going to use quite a lot of concepts that I've talked about in other places, especially if you follow the Cat's Effect course, this will be the most appropriate for you. We also talked about how to create your own string interpolation and value types in Scala, among other things, on the YouTube channel. As always, I recommend that you write code with me in this tutorial because we're going to write quite a bit of code. And whenever you need to refresh your memory or need a teammate to learn Doobie, just refer back to this video or to the written form at the blog with the link in the description, which by the way, I recommend that you have handy because we're going to copy some configuration code. All right, cool. Now, without further ado, I've created a new project for this particular tutorial. So this is an empty Scala project, and I'm using Scala 2 for this tutorial, although I'm pretty sure the same code could work on Scala 3. I haven't tested this because my dev environment is acting up. And the first thing that I'm going to do is add the library definitions under my build.sbt, which you can find in the written version of this tutorial. So here at the very first code box, you can simply copy that and paste the contents at the end of your build.sbt, hit this little refresh icon, and in just a few moments, we're gonna have all the libraries downloaded automatically. Cool, while the SBT is downloading all the library definitions, we're also going to create a Postgres Docker container so that we can have a database to work with. So I'm going to copy this content over here, which is a Docker composed YML file. And under the Doobie demo, or at the root of my little project, I'm going to create a new directory, I'm going to call this Docker. And under Docker, I'm going to create a special file whose name is docker composeyml Pretty sure you're familiar with this kind of file, the name is important. And I'm going to paste the contents here. So the Docker Compose YML specifies that the image is Postgres, which Docker can automatically find. The volumes means that we have a folder or a directory that we're going to mount inside the Docker container, we're going to create a SQL uh, directory under Docker. So I'm going to create a new directory here, I'm going to call this SQL. That is because we're going to set up a database automatically when the Docker component, the Docker container uh, starts. The user and password are both Docker so that we know where to connect to the port is 5432. And then we have a visual interface for this database. Now under SQL, I'm going to create another file, which is my imdb.sql. The name is not important, but we're going to create a little database which stores actors, movies, directors, and that sort of stuff for a fictitious IMDB kind of application that we are going to create. And right underneath that, we have a big code block that I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste that inside my imdb.sql. So this is the database definition, which has some tables, directors, movies, and actors, and movies actors. And we also have foreign keys between these tables so that we can query them easily. The diagram looks like this, where we have directors and movies. So every movie has one director, a director can direct multiple movies. And movies and actors are in many to many relationships, which is why we have this intermediate table movies underscore actors to simplify those relationships. And now I'm going to add the actual data that will sit inside this database. So I'm going to copy this whole block of code. And then I'm going to add that at the bottom of my imdb.sql. So this is going to be the SQL script that is going to be executed when the Postgres uh, database container is going to start up. Cool. Now I'm going to navigate to this Docker folder here, the Docker directory. So I'm going to say copy path, and I'm going to copy the absolute path. And in a terminal, 
I'm going to navigate here to the Docker uh, directory, and then I'm going to say Docker dash compose up so that Docker can fetch the appropriate image and start the Postgres container. Yes, I will allow Docker to access everything. And if you see this sort of output where we see alter table and commit, then that means the Docker database was correctly created. Now, I'm going to create another terminal here, and I'm going to say Docker PS to see what kind of Docker containers we have. So we have Docker underscore DB underscore one. This is the name of the database container. And I'm going to say Docker exec dash it, this thing, and then a bash. And now I have root access inside the Docker container. And I'm going to say PSQL dash U big U Docker dash D the database my IMDB. This is the name of the database that we created at the beginning of the SQL script, the create database, my IMDB. So I'm going to connect to this database so that I can query something. So if I do select star from actors, we have a bunch of actors already created for us by the script that I added at the beginning. All right. So if you run all of these commands and you see this kind of output, then that means your database was successfully created. And this is a prerequisite for what we are going to do from the code that is from the Scala code. All right. So the Docker container is running and under source main Scala, we are going to run a new Scala application. I'm going to call this Doobie demo, make it an object, and I'm going to create a main method in case we need to test some stuff. Now, the Doobie demo will actually be an IO application because Doobie as a library is based on cat's effect. So if we want to run a cat's effect application, I'm actually going to say object Doobie demo extends, and I'm going to have IO app that you can find from cat's effect. And cat's effect being a dependency, it's already uh, added for us inside the dependencies of our project. And IO app has a method called run, which returns a special data type called an IO. So this is an IO of exit code. And IO is very important. It's the fundamental data type of cat's effect. So we will naturally import that. And we are going to say, for instance, uh, IO with print line hello doobie. And then I'm going to turn this IO, which is an IO unit as exit code dot success. So this will be a valid IO application in cat's effect. And we're going to test that to make sure the application has all the appropriate libraries correctly downloaded and installed. It takes a little while for the compiler to warm up. And after that, the compilation will be a little faster. All right, so we have this little string. And finally, after eight or so minutes of just setting things up, we can write some actual code. Now, how do we interact with a database using Doobie? Well, we are going to need what is called a transactor. A transactor is a data type that will allow us to run a connection to our database, run a query, and return some values based on that connection. So I'm going to call this uh, transactor uh, XA. And the type of that is transactor. And transactor takes a higher kind of type, which we are going to use as the type of cat's effect, which is IO. And for those of you familiar with cat's effect, you know what IO is. And we're going to run the following. I'm going to say transactor. I'm going to say from driver manager. And this will take as effect type IO. And as arguments, we're going to pass the uh, driver class name. So the driver is going to be org.postgresql dot driver, we're going to need the URL for the database. So this is gdbc colon postgresql. And then the URL of the actual database. So this is going to be slash slash localhost um, 5432 slash my imdb. Or you can simply say my IMDB, this is going to fetch the local host, and the username, which is Docker, and the password, which is again, Docker. 
So this is a transactor. Now, this is an effectful thing because when you run an actual query, you're going to return an effect. So this will not actually run that particular query until you evaluate that effect, which of course can produce side effects. Cool. Now, if you want to run an actual query on top of the database, you'll need to use this transactor. So I'm going to define a method, let's say, find all actor names. This is going to be an IO of whatever kind of value you want to return after that query. Let's say we want a list of strings. And I'm going to uh, define my actual query. So I'm going to say, uh, let's call this query as SQL quote. And notice that we are now using uh, a custom interpolator. Right? And in order to do that, we're going to uh, run a bunch of imports. So I'm going to say import doobie.implicits. So doobie implicits everything, which will unlock the custom SQL interpolator as being an implicit class over the string context. You probably saw the custom string interpolator video on the Ruck the JVM channel. If not, I recommend you do that. It's pretty cool that you can create your own uh, custom interpolators on top of what Scala naturally offers. So in any event, I'm going to run my SQL query as select name from actors. This is the actual query that I would write in an actual database. And then I'm going to say dot query of type string. So I'm going to write the type parameter here. And I need to return an actual list of strings by saying let's call this action as a query dot to list. So this will be a very interesting type called connection IO with list string. So this will be an effectful thing, which will return a connection that if run will return a list of string as a result. So then as the effect that I want to return at the very end of this method, I'm going to say action dot transact. And I'm going to pass this transactor as argument. And the end result is that I'm going to return an effect, which when evaluated will return a list of string after running this query on top of that particular database. So that was quite a mouthful. I'm going to demo that in the code. So in my main method, which is run, I'm going to say find all actor names, which is an IO list string. Now I would like to print everything that I uh, find from the uh, database because as exit code success will simply not print anything to the console. And I would like to do that. And uh, to that end, I'm going to run an implicit class. I'm going to call this debugger that takes a type argument A and wraps an IO as an IO A. Just to decorate IOs with an extension method, then I'm going to call it debug. And this will return an IO A. And I'm going to run the following. And I'm going to say IO dot map. And for whatever value the IO might return, if evaluated, I'm going to print. So I'm going to say print line. And I'm going to decorate that with the thread that ended up evaluating that, that IO just to give you some insight on how these things will actually happen on top of the thread pool on which they run. So I'm going to uh, run my little interpolator here, I'm going to say thread dot current thread dot get name. And then finally, I'm going to print my actual value. And then I'm going to return the same value for the IO to be further mapped or processed along the way. So this implicit class is only for the debug extension method. If you're running skull three, all you have to do is remove that implicit class and just write extension. Now, of course, I'm using Scala 2 in this project, so that will not work. But otherwise, that structure will run the same way. Cool. Now, find all actor names. I'm going to now decorate with my debug method because I now have access to that. And I'm going to shamelessly run my application. And I should see all the actor names that I have in my database. So have list of, and then we have an actual list of actors from the database. So this is our start with the Doobie library. 
Now the next thing that I want to show you is how to extract a single value out of a query. If you want to select a particular name, a particular actor name from a particular ID, you can do that and return not a list of string but an actual string or um, an option string if that particular value is not present. And to that end, I'm actually going to create uh, some case classes because we don't necessarily operate just with strings or ints or whatever. We also work with our own case classes. So I'm going to define a case class. I'm going to call this actor with an ID as an int and a name as a string. And I'm also going to create another case class. I'm going to call this movie. And this will have an ID of type string, a title as a string, a year of launch, which is an int, actors, which is a list of string. This is the actual actor names, really. And the director, director, which is a string. And my code is getting a little wide, so let me collapse my explorer. And that is going to be my other case class. Now, let's say that I would like to create, or rather return, the only actor for a particular ID. So I'm going to define another method. Let's, let's say find actor by ID, which is an IO of actor. Now, I'm also going to pass an actual argument to this method. Let's say the ID, which is of type int. And this will return an IO, that is an effect, which when evaluated will produce an actor. Now, I'm going to run the same pattern by first specifying the query. So I'm going to have, let's say, SQL quote, and I'm going to say select ID name from actors, where ID equals, and I'm going to inject my ID argument. So interpolation has its own benefits, which is that you can inject the actual parameters directly in the query. And I'm going to say query and now instead of string, the type, I'm also going to use the actor type. So query of type actor. And then I'm going to say, let's say action. I'm going to say query dot unique. Query dot unique will return an actual actor. And if that particular actor uh, does not exist in the database, then this will throw an exception. And you can then say action dot transact through that transactor XA. And uh, we can actually call that. So I'm going to say uh, find actor by ID with, let's say, ID one debug as exit code success. And let me run this application. We're going to see Mr. Henry here. This is going to be our actor. And notice that the conversion to our little case class happened automatically. Now, if you're not really sure whether the actor exists in the database or not, you can use option. For instance, if I say find actor by ID, let's say use ID 99, then when I want to evaluate this effect, it will throw an exception. So you can see a stack trace more rows expected. That is because we return the query actually returns zero rows and I expect one. If you are not sure whether that ID exists in the database, you can use option. But in this case, the effect will return an IO of option actor. So I'm going to say option actor in this case, and you'll be able to map that particular option when you evaluate that effect. So find actor by ID 99 will return a none. Right. Cool. So that is how you can return a single value out of a query, either by saying unique or option if you're not sure whether that query will actually return a row. Cool. Now, in practice, using uh, concrete types such as lists of strings when you want to return multiple values is quite impractical and frankly quite dangerous because if your tables are quite big, the lists might become quite big. And that is why we tend to return multiple values as a stream instead. Now, because Doobie works in the type level ecosystem with cat's effect and such, a stream is actually expressed as an FS2 stream. FS2 comes from functional streams for Scala, FSS, also known as FS2, which is outside the scope of this tutorial. We're going to have another tutorial incoming at some point. And 
I'm going to demonstrate something very short. Let's say you want to return all the actor names as not as a list, but as a stream. I'm going to return actor names stream as SQL quote. And I'm going to say select name from actors. And then I'm going to say query of type string because these are the values that I'm uh, after. And instead of saying query dot two with a type list, I'm going to say dot stream. Dot stream means that I'm going to return a stream of, and the resource type is connection IO, which is an effectful connection to the database. And the values that will pass through that stream are of type string, which is my particular interest. Now, if you want to actually turn that stream into a list, if you want to fetch all the items one by one or many by one, you can say dot compile dot to list transact. And then you can use that transaction manager XA. So the stream will actually be the definition of all the values that will be fetched at some point when you want to evaluate that stream. And you can evaluate that stream by saying compile to list, and this will collapse that string to an in memory list. And then this will be an effect which you can use to transact with that particular transaction manager. So when you say to list, you'll get an effect managing a connection. And then you can call transact on that and you can pass in that transaction manager. Now this seemingly one liner will actually do quite a lot of magic under the hood, as you probably noticed, the goal was to use stream so that you can process a large amount of data without actually bringing all that data to memory. Now, of course, in order to prove this example, I brought the stream to memory, but that's not necessarily what you absolutely need to do. So if I'm interested in doing that, I can say, uh, actor stream names, dot debug as exit code success. And we're going to see the same results as the original query. All right, so we have all our little actors. Amazing. Now, folks, these are the high level ways of querying a database, there are lower level things, which you can use which give you a crazy amount of control, but they are also proportionally difficult to use. And quite ironically, they're still called high level connection or HC and HPS for high level prepared statement. And I'm going to demonstrate a similar query such as this one, which uh, returns a stream. And let's say I want to find an actor by their name. So I'm going to define, let's say, find actor by name. And I'm going to pass a name as a string. And I'm going to return an IO of option actor. And I'm going to run uh, my little query as a string. So I'm going to say uh, query string as select ID name from actors, where name equals and I'm going to use a wildcard uh, token here, which Doobie will uh, parse eventually. And I'm going to say HC, and I'm going to import HC from Doobie. So this is doobie.hc, which is an alias for high dot connection. This is an object with some APIs. So HC for high level connection, I'm going to use HC dot stream. And we will need to pass the actual type that we are expecting. So these are the values that we are going to return uh, when the query is being evaluated. And I'm going to pass a bunch of arguments here. So I'm going to use query the query string. And I'm going to use a prepared statement, which is a bunch of arguments that Doobie will then use to replace these wildcards with. And to that end, I'm going to use HPS, which is another module in Doobie that I'm going to automatically import. So we have Doobie.hc and HPS. HPS is high level prepared statement, again, an object with a bunch of APIs. And I'm going to use HPS.set to set my little argument that I mentioned earlier, Doobie will replace the uh, wildcard with. So I'm going to set the name here as the first argument for the wildcard, and then the chunk size for the stream because Doobie will read values in chunks, not all at once. So I'm going to use, for instance, 100 elements at once. Now, so far, this is a stream, an FS2. So we're basically up to this point. 
after calling a stream. Now I'll need to say compile and then I'm going to say to list and then uh, if I get a list I'm going to say map and I'm going to use head option to return the first actor whose name is equal to whatever uh, wildcard I use here. So uh, up to this point, we have that connection IO thing, which I'm going to use to say transact on that transaction manager or transactor. So the compile to list transact XA is the same as the last part of the actor name stream example. Only that in this case, we used a lower level API, which managed the query string manually the parameter list manually and the chunk size manually for the stream. So if I say find actor by name with the name uh, Henry uh, Cavill, if I remember the name correctly, uh, if I run this application, we're going to see that particular actor. All right, so we have actor with the ID one Henry Cavill. Okay. So that was an option with a lower level API using HC and HPS. Another lower level API is fragments, which means that you can define variable pieces of queries that you can then combine into one. So that, that is if you want to automatically generate queries by yourself, these fragments are a good way of doing that. So I'm going to run Another example, I'm going to say find actors by initial letter, for instance. I'm going to say find actors by initial letter, and I'm going to say letter as an argument as, let's say, a car or a string. Doesn't really matter all that much. And I'm going to use an IO of list of actor as my return type. Cool. Now, you can define variable pieces of queries. And uh, for instance, if I want to split my query, select ID name from actors where initial letter equals whatever, I can say the select ID name, this is a fragment, let's say the select part, as fr quote, this is another custom string interpolator which Doobie supports, fr comes from a fragment, of course, and you can say select ID and name, that is if you want to generate the number of columns that you want to select from the database, you can do that. And uh, I'm going to have the from table, the from part, as fr quote from actors, actors, and then I'm going to use the uh, filter or the where part as fr quote where, and I'm going to use left with name and one, that is the first letter of the name column, must be equal to, and this is where my string interpolator is doing its magic, I can inject letter here and then I can combine all these parts to combine a single statement. So I'm going to say val query as, and I can use select part plus plus from part plus plus where part. So you can combine all these fragments into one statement. I'm actually going to call this statement because in order to turn that into a query, you will need to call the query method on this. So uh, it would have been uh, pretty weird if I said query dot query actor. So I'm going to say statement dot query of type actor. And then you can use the other continuation that you learned from the previous example. So you can say query to list, query uh, stream compile to list transact whatever. You can say anything that you like. So I can say stream dot compile dot to list transact and I'm going to use that transaction manager XA. All right. So this will be an effect which will return a list of actors once done. So find actors by initial and I'm going to use the letter H because it's really easy and we're going to see at least Mr. Henry returned in my final result. All right, so these fragments are a very useful tool for generating queries automatically or programmatically by uh, generating pieces independently and then combining them all together. Now, the written version of this tutorial, the blog post, has a bunch of tips on how to use the monoid syntax with these fragments if you're interested in that sort of stuff in cats. Now, 
Another thing that I wanted to show you was how to update stuff into a database. For instance, if I want to save an actor into my database, I would run the following thing. I'm going to define a method, say save actor, and I'm going to have an ID as an int and the name as a string, and this will return an IO of int. And this will be an effect which will contain, when evaluated, the number of rows affected. All right. Now, I'm going to define my little query. So I'm going to have query as SQL quote, and I'm going to say insert into actors, and I'm going to have ID and name, values, and in parentheses, I'm going to have ID and name injected here. Now, I'm going to say query. And instead of saying to list or whatever we did earlier when we fetched uh, items from the database, we can say query dot update dot run. And then I'm going to have transact on that transaction manager. So query update run, this is a connection IO returning the number of rows when that particular query is executed. And then I'm actually going to run that and return an effect with the transact method as we did before. So let's say I want to call save actor with the ID, let's say 99. And this will be an int. And the actor name is my own name, Daniel. And we'll have debug as exit code dot success. If I run this application, we will have uh, number one here being printed. So one being the number of affected rows and the application exited successfully. Now, if I want to actually query the database, I'm actually going to say select star from actors and a colon. And at the ID 99, I have my name here in the database. So I'm on the record. Now you can also insert items into the database with auto generated IDs so that you don't have to manage IDs yourself. But only some drivers and some databases support that and uh, a query will fail if more than one row is being affected. So I'm going to show you how you can update with auto generated IDs. So I'm going to say, uh, save actor auto generated. And I'm going to have a name, which will return another IO of int. And th in this case, the int will return the uh, key that was generated. So I'm going to say, um, SQL quote, I'm going to say insert into actors with on the column name, and I'm going to have values. And I'm going to, uh, in parentheses, inject my name argument. And this SQL query can be decorated. So I'm going to say update. And then I'm going to say with unique generated keys. And this will need the appropriate type argument for the column type and the column name for which we want Doobie to generate the uh, new key. And the column name is obviously ID here. Cool. And finally, I'm going to say dot transact on that transaction manager. Cool. So I wrote this in a one line. Now, I'm going to use the save actor auto generated into the console. And let's in inject another name. Let's say Jimmy. Cool. Now Jimmy is going to be inserted into the database. And we're going to see something being printed to the console, which is the number seven. This is the first ID that could be uniquely generated by Doobie. And here in the database, if I query select star from actors, notice that Jimmy was automatically inserted with the first ID that could be generated. Cool. Now, there are a bunch of ways of expressing the same thing because Doobie is a pretty rich library. For instance, this SQL string, SQL insert into actors values, update, run, transact, is equivalent to another way of doing the same thing with some explicitly mentioned types in Doobie. So I'm going to define a save actor version two, 
with ID type int and name as a string. This will return IO int. And I'm going to run uh, my uh, SQL string. So I'm going to uh, shamelessly copy that. So I'm going to have query string. Right. So my query string is equal to the same string as earlier. And instead of ID and name, I'm going to use question mark and question mark, the wildcards that we saw earlier. Now, unlike the HC and HPS kind of stuff that we uh, saw in the previous example, we're going to use an explicit type called update that you need to import from dbutil update. I'm importing this automatically. So I'm going to say update of type actor. So this is the type that I want to inject into these values. And then I'm going to run the apply method on that query string or insert statement rather. And then I'm going to run on an actor. So I'm going to say actor with the ID and name that I receive as arguments to the method. Now this thing, this line 68 is equivalent to saying query dot update after running uh, the SQL string interpolation. Now, after creating this connection IO, then I'm going to call transact on that transaction manager that we saw earlier. So save actor version two should work in the same way. If I pass in the appropriate arguments, so that is the ID ace, and I'm going to use, for instance, Mary, this should work in the exact same way as before. So let me run the application. And now the number one means the number of rows that were affected by the insert statement. And my database should now show a new row with the ID eight and the name Mary as my actor. All right. Now, this particular more cumbersome way of running an update statement is pretty useful because this also allows us to run an update many kind of query. So when we want to update or rather insert multiple values into our table at the same time. So I'm going to show you update many or insert many. So for this example, I'm going to use, for instance, save multiple actors. And I'm going to have the actor names as a list of string. And this is going to be an IO of int. Now, I'm going to use my insert statement. So I'm going to have my insert statement as insert into actors, where the column name is applicable to us, values, and then I'm going to use a little wildcard. All right. Now, my insert statement will be subject to an update uh, query or data type or apply method or however you want to call this. And I'm going to have update with the type string in this case. And I'm going to pass my insert statement. And I'm going to use update many. And notice that you can use update many and update many with generated keys as we did earlier. Now, update many is an effect that will return the number of rows that were affected. And for this particular case, I'm going to use update many with generated keys. And instead of returning an IO int, I'm actually going to return an IO of list actor that were also created before updating the database. So I'm going to say update many with generated keys. And I'm going to type that with actor. So I'm going to help the compiler by passing the appropriate type. And I'm going to pass the column names. So ID and name. And I'm going to as an argument, I'm going to pass my actor names to replace that particular wildcard. So I'm going to say actor names. Cool. Now, this particular uh, statement is my update action. Now, this particular update action is going to return, if I'm uh, uh, not mistaken, this is going to return an FS2 stream. So I'm going to return update action dot compile dot to list 
And then finally, I'm going to call transact on that transaction manager as we did earlier while managing FS2 streams. Okay, now if we want to test this, we can call save multiple actors. And of course, I need to pass a list here. So I'm going to say list with Alice and then Bob and then let's say Charlie. Debug has exit code success as before. Let's run this and we should see Alice, Bob, and Charlie being uh, inserted into the database. So we have 15, 16, and 17. Not sure why the database generated these particular IDs, but whatever. And Alice, Bob, and Charlie should be available in our little database. So select star from actors should give us Alice, Bob, and Charlie with these particular IDs. Amazing. So this is how we can insert multiple values at the same time into the database with a single query. So this was your introduction to Doobie. Now I have much more to show you on Doobie and the written version at the blog contains much more, but I noticed that the video was getting quite long. So I'm going to follow up with a second part to this video showing you the intricacies and the complexities of Doobie in the next video. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material. Check me out on rockthejvm.com. I have hundreds of hours now of courses on Scala, functional programming, and all the good stuff. And until next time, I'm Daniel signing off.